Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my channel Animal Instinct. I'm back for a belated cross-stitching update today and it's Saturday the 24th of April 2021. Um, my filming has been a bit um, hit and miss this year with no real routine but I am back and I'm happy to happy to be filming again. Been quite busy since my last um, my last video. Um, so thank you if you if you do watch my videos thanks for being patient <laughs> and um, if you've just found me then hi and I hope you enjoy seeing my stitching. Um, since I last filmed this little fellow has been up to some mischief and actually I filmed that bloopers reel last time because he kept sabotaging my um, my filming um, and probably while you were all watching him and laughing at him, he was actually quite sick and in hospital. So thankfully he's all better now. Um, but I'll, I'll go through all my stitching and then I'll let you know what happened with little Reggie um, at the end. But as a little teaser. It's okay, you don't have to be self-conscious. He's missing some hair. Off you go. Oh, it's been a, it's been an interesting time, <laughs> but let's get straight into the stitching. So I have a few finishes to go through. Um, the first one, I think I was pretty close to a finish last time. Um, and it is a Gecko Rouge kit, a Swirlies kit. So they have a range of um, Swirlies animals. And this is Gabrielle. She was a freebie kit. That I got when I did um, when I purchased another kit a few years ago now you can't buy her but you can buy her brother Noah and there's a whole range of different animals so she's on 14 count Ada that came um, died I think the team at Gecko Rouge dyed the fabric uh, and I have finished her although she's a bit crinkly There she is, so she definitely needs an iron. <laughs> and I'm going to make her into a pillow. My sewing machine is on holidays at the moment. <laughs> um, but when I get that back, uh, I would like to finish, fi fully finish her off. So that was um, a nice easy stitch, like a lot of block colour. Zero confetti. Um, I did get carried away and I forgot the swirl that the pattern had, um, but actually I think she probably doesn't need that. Um, so yeah, it's Gabrielle. Uh, just wanted to show you also how much thread I had left. Gecko Rouge are generous with what they give you. They don't tell you the DMC numbers, but um, I've never had a problem with running out. So I could just about, yeah, I think I could just about stitch her again if I wanted to. Next up, I'm um, doing the Joyful World series with my good friend Deb Wilson and we're stitching one block every month. We started in September, so we've got four months to go. So this is the, by the Snowflower Diaries um, and they're free charts available on their blog. Um, so I think today I'm going to be putting everything in the description box below. Um, and I should, I'll hopefully put a link into their blog, but just Google Snowflower Diaries Joyful World. So I don't think I'd finished March last time. I think I was close to being finished. So here's March. Also, nothing's ironed today. So just warning you. <laughs> um, it's on 18 count Ada, Vintage Country Mocha in pretty much the cold for DMC using one strand to make the crosses. Um, so March is looking great. And then I've also finished April, which is also a really great pattern. I think Deb and I are going to have some fun um, fully finishing these when they're all done. She is very creative <laughs> and I look forward to learning, learning lots from her. Thank you, Deb. So next up is May. Um, I can't remember what animal May is. Um, but I do have some more on this piece of Ada. 
So I've got one more to go on that piece and then um, I've got some more as well. Um, so that's my finishes. I can't remember how long it's been. Has it been about six weeks? I honestly can't remember. Um, Reggie threw me big time, put me off my game. I was, I was quite concerned uh, and then just never kind of got around to, to filming again. So now we'll go on to just projects that I'm working on, my whips, works in progress. So firstly, as always, my temperature typography by Sarah, the Stitching Mummy. Um, you can buy her patterns on Etsy. And this is on 25 count pewter Lagana, one over one full cross. And basically there's um, the pattern with the letters and then there's a color scale um, for the temp or temperature range with different DMC colors assigned. I changed mine up a little bit from, from what Sarah had um, suggested. She's got different um, colors for different uh, climates. Uh, and I just sort of adjusted mine to really suit our climate to get the most colors, hopefully. If you've got the same colours in one letter, it's a bit more time efficient to stitch them all in the one go rather than doing it every day. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. <laughs> so the red was really warm, down to through to oranges and yellows and into greens. And I'm pretty sure um, there'll be some blues because it has gotten cooler and the electric blankets on the bed. <laughs> I am going to just pack up as I go because of a certain rat bag who has disgraced himself. He cannot be trusted. Um, and just for an indication of what I am dealing with, anything dangly, um, whether it's just at one of these um, cheap bags or a beautiful um, zipper full, I have to um, put like inside the bag and then close it because otherwise he'll try and eat it uh, and then he can still see it dangling in these ones and he still goes for them anyway speak of the devil okay so my next um whip again the <laughs> the the label is zipped inside the bag I have various tags to tell me what projects they are, but I just can't have them dangling. <laughs> this is Funky Menagerie by Lindy Stitches. It was a stitch along that came out in four parts. I did the first part um, back in January, straight away. And then I have struggled to keep up ever since. It's now finished, um, but I am definitely still going. This is on a piece of 32 count, can't remember. <laughs> uh, it's opalescent. It's from Sew It All Australia. No, having a mental blank, but it's great. So it basically comes out, the four parts of the four like um, quarters or four quadrants of the piece, it's a big square. So the first month was, I guess, roughly those ones. And then I'm working on the second month. So I have finished the border for the second part um, and some of the critters, but yeah, still got a few critters to go. And then I'll come down to the bottom right corner for the third month and work my way around. So a bit disappointed that I didn't manage to keep up, um, but a really fun, enjoyable one, um, trying to work out what they all are. So, <laughs> Zip, he's watching. Zip has to go inside. Okay, 
Okay, so next up um, are my whip go pieces for March and April. So I have the, the classic bingo board with different projects on each of 25 squares. Um, if you want to know more about WIPGO, go to the Facebook group, WIPGO 2021. Um, two numbers are called every month and you basically set yourself goals um, for each piece. I've got the same goal for each of them, which is 21 hours on the piece, ideally that month. But if not that month, then um, hopefully during the year. It's been a really mixed um, bag for me <laughs> this year. So January, I met the goals, no problem. February, I didn't meet either of them. And one of them I did put about eight hours in, but most of it was frogging. Um, March, I did meet them again quite easily. And April, I think I've put like 15, 20 minutes into one of them. That's it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm all right with it. So first up for March was Mini Contessa and Squid by Omar Rayan, a heaven and earth designs um, chart. And I'd already started working on this, I think, last video, and I was working on getting her face complete. So this is on 28 count, easy count, one over one full crosses. And I just basically wanted to finish her face before moving out to the edge, like I would normally start in the top left, but just wanted to be sure that I was okay with the detail and like up close, sure, it's, it's patchy. Um, but from back here, it's absolutely fine. So I didn't quite finish. I think there were two DMC colors that were must, they must be in other projects and I just didn't really feel like going hunting. I have no idea what that cat's problem is. <laughs> um, so I worked my way out to the top, uh, to the left. I'm not quite up to the top. I can't remember where the top is, but it's it's a little bit higher than that. But I put quite a few hours into that. And you can see that tentacle coming in nicely. So that's that one, 21 hours. And then the next one that um, came up for March was The Pilgrim by Long Dog Samplers. Oh, now this project bag is a bit of a mess it's a bit chaotic in here just bear with me so the pilgrim is one that i stitch on usually every february um, because i chose it to um, celebrate five years freedom from ovarian cancer and february is the awareness month and the awareness colour, actually, it's more like um, my teal cart. That's really what the, the awareness colour is. But I chose a darker green, dark teal green um, to stitch it in. I didn't get to it this February, so it was good that it came out in March. And I, I don't think I'll be able to easily find a, a before pick, but I think I was, let's see, I'd started in the top left. And it, that's right, I'd come across and I'd got, I'd done the rat. And so I was up to here. Um, I think I'd done dare or maybe just started the word dare. And I'm really happy with how much I got done. I came all the way over to the right hand corner. Um, I know without mistakes that I can see because last month or in February on my other long dog, I'd made a massive mistake in the right, top right corner and spent a long time frogging. <laughs> But that hasn't happened this time. So I'm stitching it on 30, oh, 30. Oh man, I don't have any of that info here. It's either 32 or 36 count platinum linen. And I'm using Silks for You PR011. I really need to tidy up this bag. And this is rather creased. Oh well. There we go. 
So you can see the wrap in the middle, like under my nose, everything to the right. I'm not sure if that's your right or left, but that way <laughs> is what I got done in March. And the other thing that I did was I decided I wanted to try the letters in a different color to make them stand out a bit more. Um, so I unpicked Dare and I found oh my gosh <laughs> usually a lot more organized I'm not sure what's going on in there but anyway I found this variegated silk it is PR140 And it's kind of a complementary variegated color to the green. Um, I'm not a big fan, like personally, of stitching with like such a variegation, such a color change in the in the thread. But I just thought, no, come on, give it a go. <laughs> and I think it's going to look really nice, really pretty. Lighting is terrible today. Hopefully, you can see that. So I'm looking forward to working on this one again soon. I think it's I think it's 36 count. <laughs> Who knows? I do have that written down somewhere, not here. So they were the two whip go pieces for March and then I'll just show you the two pieces for um, April. The first one is, I don't even know what it's called, Quiet Please maybe, um, it's this one. Now as far as I know this is a freebie available on a blog and I'll pop I can't remember where, but I'll put it in the description below. Um, I believe, and I don't know the full story, that someone had sort of slightly recharted it and was selling it. Um, but as far as I understand, you shouldn't pay for this chart. And I'm pretty sure that's correct. So if I am wrong, please, please tell me because I don't want to do the wrong thing. Um, and I'm definitely happy to give credit where it's due, but that was my understanding. So this is where it's up to. It's on 32 count Belfast linen. It's chalkboard by XG Designs. It's showing up pretty well. It's, it's like a blackboard colour. And I'm stitching it with um, the 12 weight Sulky. So this is 4010. Wanted to give it a go. Everyone seems to be talking about it. Um, it's a little bit thicker than DMC, so on 32 count, it's it's pretty good to use just with one strand. Um, I probably actually just prefer good old DMC myself, but um, this is fine. It's good to try new things. I think I've done <laughs> like 20 minutes, if that. Pretty much the eye and like the start of one of the bordery things. So I don't think I'm going to get back to it this month, so yeah. Did not meet my goal, my whip go goal for that one. And then the other whip go piece for April is another Gecko Rouge chart. It's one that I started last year, Atomic Garden 149. Artwork by Carissa Rose. Um, it's a pretty big one. It's 324 by 224 stitches with 75 colours. And this is what I have so far. So that's kind of the size. And then start it on the lens. When I do come back to it, I might maybe do tent stitch for the background, but I have already done a bit of full crosses. I'll just see. I'll see if it if it looks obvious because that would save me quite a bit of time. 
But again, I don't actually think I'm going to stitch on that this month. Well, I'm just going to call it. I'm not going to stitch on it <laughs> this month. That's fine. I'm enjoying being part of Whipgo, but I'm also just, you know, I just want to stitch for enjoyment and I don't want any pressure on me. So if I don't feel like it, that is fine. Let's not want to go back in. Okay, so that's whip go. I guess we'll get May whip go in a couple of days and I probably am not going to stitch on those either, <laughs> but we'll get to that. I don't have too much hole. Um, I've still got whips here, but this is kind of hole and whip. Um, so in a moment of weakness <laughs> um, and stress, uh, when Reggie was in hospital, I think was when I bought this, I decided to join the Gecko Rouge Stitch Along. So it's a mystery stitch along. And they did tell us... Oh, can you see him? Just <laughs> cannot be trusted. They did tell us the artist and that's Anita in Verarity. And I really like her artwork. She um, does quirky creatures and people. And I have I've stitched one of hers. Um, if you've watched me for a little while, it was Mr. Wiggles or Wiggles, um, a worm on a mushroom. And I've also got uh, another kit, um, her Highland Coo. So I thought, well, I like, I like her style, so why not? Let's just do it. So I've got the whole kit. Hasn't made it to a project bag yet. It's in a box. Um, they also told us the like the name of the sow, I guess, which is a clue. And I believe that I could have Googled um, the name and, and the artist and probably found out what we were stitching, but I just I didn't do that. This is the cover sheet of the stitch along. So Anita in Variety Little Stars. And what they are, there's going to be six music icons. Um, they charted the music, the score. I think that's for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, and I chose to do mine on 25 count, easy count, one over one full crosses. Sort of my happy place. Um, and it's got beautiful colours. This is a little bit of a mess too, but very, very colourful. So the first one came out on April the 1st and it was just in time for the Easter long weekend. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll start it. I probably won't finish it, but I'll at least start it. And once it came out, I realised um, I don't necessarily want to just do you know, all six of them together with the, in one like flat piece. I'd like to finish them all separately into ornaments um, and maybe even put something in the base, like maybe a, a magnet or something to have them able to stand up. I'm not quite sure yet. So I had started um, the treble clef. I hope that's right. I used to play some instruments years ago. I've forgotten a little lingo. Anyway, I'm not going to continue with that. But when I saw, God, here we go. When I saw the first piece, um, I was in love. It's David Bowie as Ziggy Stardust. And I put a lot of effort in. And I finished, ended up finishing the crosses um, over the Easter weekend. And then when I first saw, <laughs> first saw it, I thought, oh, what have I done? That is a lot of backstitch. And I don't mind backstitch, but on 25 count, when you've stitched one over one full crosses and the backstitch has to go like, I'm going to have to pierce fabric threads. I was wondering if I would have regretted my decision. Um, so I started on the clothes because I thought that's probably going to be more forgiving than his face if it doesn't look right. 
but it's fine. Just got a sharp needle and off I went. And I kind of ran out of oomph because I got to, yeah, I've kind of done his forehead. And then I started, I got to his hair and it's, that is just full of backstitch and I just ran out of steam. So I still need to finish his hair and his face. Um, and I will unpick this, but I think he's great. So it's really, really curious to see who the next one will be. She's even got his eyes. Um, ah, he's, he's great. Now with that stitching, I met, I broke some records. I've been um, counting stitches every day since the start of the year. Never counted, bothered to count before, but now I'm kind of, um, it's just something I do every day. So I have like this <laughs> scroll where I just write down how many stitches I've done a day. And it's highly variable. So in January, I got um, 19, 1,700 stitches. In February, I only did 10,000. 10, so it's all over the place. But before the Easter weekend, my record was 1,899 full crosses since I've been counting in one 24 hour period. So one day. And then another day, I stitched on a couple of different pieces and had put everything away, counted up counted up the total stitches for the end of the day and it was 1899 <laughs> stitches again so I don't really care but I was like oh I, I need to do better than that I need to break that so my second day working so it was over the Easter Easter break um so I had some extra time uh I got one thousand nine hundred and thirty-five, and that's full crosses in a day. So I, I beat I beat the eighteen hundred and ninety-nine, and then two days, on. yeah, two days after that. So still the Easter long weekend. Um, I actually got two thousand two hundred and forty-three stitches in one day. <laughs> I have no idea how I did it. I mean, clearly I had absolutely zero responsibility. I think, I think I also listened to an audio book rather than watching TV. So I wasn't distracted by the TV. I could just listen and stitch. Um, Pat, it's on Pattern Keeper. That makes things quicker too. And it wasn't a highly confetti piece either. Um, I think I've joined a book club this year because my reading's gone. Oh, it's been terrible in the last few years. So I'm in a book club to try and get me reading again. And I think I had been struggling with that particular book and just decided to just sit down and just get through it. <laughs> um, so that helped as well. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't can't see me beating that. I, yeah, anyway. And that was a lot of stitches over the course of a weekend. So the next one will come out on the 1st of May, so next week. So I'm really curious to see who it's going to be. So that is the stitch along. Okay, and then the last stitching I've done this month um, is an unexpected restart. Yeah, completely unexpected. So I was thinking about um, what I'm going to do for May this year. So Stitch Mania, it's the last year that the group on Facebook will be active. Not that I'm active in that group. Um, last year, I think, was the first year I really participated and I did Whip Mania. So I put a whole, I think at that stage it was all my whips, um, onto a decision wheel, spun the wheel every day and worked on a different whip every single day during May. And I loved it. Um, I filmed a little vlog every day, combined them into weekly videos, and I got really, really nice feedback on that. A lot of people seem to enjoy it, and I still get the odd comment here and there saying, oh, I hope you're going to do that again. And I would love to, but I just I can't face working on so many different things. So I'm going the total opposite direction, and I'm going to 
monogamania. So I'm going to focus on just one piece. Um, I'll still do my Joyful World um, piece and I'll still do my temperature typography, but I have no idea if I can stick to this, but I am planning on choosing a piece and stitching on it for the entire month of May. So I was thinking, oh, what am I going to do? I could, I should probably do Firefly Cats. It's my biggest whip and I feel like it's a little bit neglected. Um, but then I thought of, I've got another full coverage piece that's, I haven't started, but it's only 12,000 stitches. It's kind of like a bookmark sort of style. Um, so I could start and finish that in May. And then I was like, oh, I've also got two whips that are about the same way, the same, um, progression I guess and I could choose one of those and actually try and finish it so the two that I was umming and ahhing between were um, my mugshot of a cat felon but I already worked on this <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that there's a child screaming somewhere not not here <laughs> Um, I already worked on this for, for Whipgo in January, so I'd already put quite a bit of work into this one. So the other one that I thought I would consider was Storytime by Zazat Namu, now known as Aruda Art. It's um, a Gecko Rouge kit. And I had started this one on 18 count Ava, two strands of floss. Um, and I pulled it out to have a look at it. See, it is in here. Hang on. And I just, I didn't like how it looked. I didn't like the stitches. I thought they were too um, crowded and made them look just not nice. And I don't know if this is just me being super picky, which is possible, or um, maybe it's my tension. Maybe the way I stitch the tension isn't conducive to 18 count Ada with two strands. And I don't think one strand would be enough for a full coverage piece. Um, because I, <laughs> I've had, a, I've been looking, I've been like spying on people's 18 count full coverage pieces and I think they're fine from what I can tell. So I don't know what my problem is, but this is where I was at. I'd done six and a half thousand stitches and I was 26% through. The whole piece has 26,000 stitches. So I thought, well, just under 20,000, that is a that is pushing it, but who knows? Maybe I could do that in a month. Never tried. I've never stuck to one project for so long. But I went looking in my fabric stash and I found a small piece of 25 count um, that was kind of a scrap sort of, I bought a bigger piece to start some other ones earlier in the year. And when I measured it, it was the perfect size for story time in 25 count. So I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just put a few stitches in and I'll see, I'll compare them. And I was just really happy with it. So this one is going away. And I've restarted it on 25. I was a little bit worried because, um, you know, I've already done a quarter of the piece and it's a kit. So, you know, they've provided me with the floss. Um, there are a couple of colours that I was a little bit worried about. I do have the DMC um, floss card thing, so I could always figure out what it is. And I'm, I'm sure that um, Gecko Rouge would also let me know what they were if I did run out of one or two, but as it turns out, it's not, not necessary. So once I started working on this, I just couldn't put it down and I've worked on it for, it's like, I think it's two weeks and I haven't really wanted to stitch on anything else. So I'm hoping that feeling continues in May. Um, so initially I wanted to get it to the point where, you know, it was up to the six and a half thousand stitches again. Um, that was my goal. Uh, I'll just show you it and then I'll figure out how many I've actually done. There we go. And it's looking great. 
what I'm doing is kind of working across in 10, 10 square deep rows. I'm doing like snaking across and back. But if I've got enough thread on my needle, I'll just come down and fill in. Um, that's why this is sort of all here. Um, just come down and fill in, uh, you know, as much as I as is as nearby without having to re-thread. So what am I up to? I'm doing this row and I'm up to this bit here. So like I would say the colour in this one, I think it extends down into here. So I'll just finish that too. And then once I've come all the way across, I'll start coming back here. So I've definitely done more than six and a half thousand now. Let me just um, check how many I have actually stitched. Oh, I meant to do this before I started filming, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, the, the 18 count, I was six and a half thousand and twenty six percent. And at the moment I'm at 7,780 and I'm at 31%. Um, so I'd like to do about another, maybe 1500 stitches this weekend and then put it down to have like a little bit of a break before I really start on it in May. Um, and I think I worked out, uh, something like 500 stitches a day. If I can, if I can do another 1500, 500 stitches a day in May and I could just about finish it. Um, but I'm also studying again, so I'll have days where I don't get any. Um, so there'll be a lot of catch up. So my, my sort of stretch goal is to work towards a finish. Which I have no idea if I can do that. <laughs> Um, but if I don't get it finished, what I would like to do is get it to the point where when it does come up for whip go, whenever that is this year, that I, there's only, you know, a small amount left and I can finish it that month. So now I don't want to give up on 18 count. I'm almost, almost there. Um, but I'd be really interested to hear, do you love 18 count with two strands for full coverage pieces? Um, do you think that you stitch with tight tension or loose tension? Do you think the stitches look, you know, sit nicely? Do you not really care? Um, what's my problem? <laughs> Please help me figure it out. <laughs> I just, I'm not sure. I know that, I know that I was, um, oh, where is it? My trolley needle for railroading that I use occasionally, that, that was in with the floss. So, you know, I'd been trying really hard to have the stitches sitting nicely, but don't know. Um, yeah, I'll just see if I can show them together. Just to show you the size difference. There you go. Oh, you can't really tell, but yeah. When I was working on the 18 count, I also had it in an eight by 11 Q-snap and I couldn't quite, like it sort of cut off here. So I couldn't quite stitch right to the end. Um, but being that little bit smaller, I've got the whole width showing. So it's nice and easy. So can you see how the size difference? Oh yeah, that helped. That shows it probably a bit better. Anyway, story time. Do you think I can finish it in May? <laughs> Is it going to be possible? There'll be maybe 17 or 18,000 stitches to do. So January, I did 19,700. February, I did 10,000. March, I did 16,500. And so far in April, I'm on track for a good month. Yeah, I'm already at 16,500 with another week to go. <laughs> we'll see. Watch this space.
keep this one in my beautiful project bag from Taryn. She makes gorgeous bags. Reggie's playing with something, just ignore. Um, speaking of bags, so that's all the stitching. I've got a little bit of stitchy kindness now. Um, the wonderful Deb Wilson. Um, <laughs> wanted to include this when she sent me something for my birthday, but she had some problems with her sewing machine. <laughs> um, anyway, problems are solved now. And she made me a project bag, which I love. It's got Australian animals. Um, so we've got kookaburra, koalas, um, that's a ringtail possum, um, I assume that's a, maybe a fairy penguin, um, superb blue wren, platypus, kidnas, that'd be a bilby. So often for Easter, instead of an Easter bunny, we talk about an Easter bilby. I actually got bitten really badly by one in vet school. Um, I was doing some work experience at a zoo and they asked me to, there was a politician visiting or something, and they asked me to get the bilby out and hold it so that the, the zookeeper could, or the vet maybe, I can't really remember, could um, show them the pouch. I think they were looking for, to see if it had young. And I'd never picked up a bilby before, but I didn't <laughs> want to admit to that. And so I just picked it up and it bit me and its tooth was in my finger and like there was, my finger was bleeding <laughs> and I just gripped my teeth and I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just let it bite me. <laughs> and I remember whoever was helping me said, I'll oh, just make sure it doesn't bite because they do, they're, they're not very nice. <laughs> so I'm like, yep, too late. Are we done now? Okay, thank you. Oh, <laughs> so bilbies. Um, there's wombats. What have I missed? Cute frogs. And, you know, the wattle. Ah, oh, it's just a really nice bag. And then on the front, she's personalised it and there is my channel name. So thank you very much, Deb. Inside, there was a little surprise too. Little matching notions pouch. And so I've got my Joyful World series in here. Um, and then what I do is I've just grabbed all the DMC ready for May. And they fit, they fit in there perf perfectly. So thank you very, very much. I love it. You know that already. And then some more stitchy kindness. So I had a lovely viewer contact me um, back in February and ask if if they could send me something for my birthday. Oh, floss tube itchy nose. Sorry. <laughs> um, and she's in Germany. And I was kind of surprised, but sure, thank you so much. And then had kind, kind of forgotten about it because now here we are in April. And I got home from work. One day I'd gone into the office. I'm going in more, more often these days. Um, got home and there was a mystery parcel in my letterbox. And it was on, I think it was the 8th of April. And it had been posted in Germany on the 8th of February. And it took two months to get here. Um, thank you so much. I'll just call you Lee because I'm not sure how if I'm supposed to mention your name. But thank you. Thank you. We've already been in touch. It was It totally made my day. So firstly, I have this fun birthday card. More animals, love it. Love it. And it's like holographic and they've all got birthday hats on. There were some chockies in there too that went into the fridge because that day was actually like unseasonably warm. It was up near 30 degrees Celsius. So they're a little bit soft, um, but they recovered just fine. And they're still in my fridge. I've had a few. Um, I'm trying to like, you know, save them, <laughs> eat them slowly. Delicious. And then also 
Now this cover sheet got a little bit wet, but she has kindly gifted me a full coverage chart called Four Seasons, full of different animals. Um, and what's really neat about it is all these little motifs around the edge. There are all sorts of things. So there's like insects. Um, it looks like that's it might be an axolotl. Um, birds, dragonflies, butterflies, um, mushroom or toadstools, snails, and then heaps of flowers too, lizards. So it, it kind of covers everything. That's really, really neat. So thank you so much, Lee. You know, you know how much that meant to me. I was, it was brilliant. Long day at work. And I came home to that and it was just ah, fantastic. Um, so that's all the stitching content. Um, thank you again for <laughs> bearing with me. I would love to film more regularly and more consistently. Um, I just started back at uni this week as well as my normal regular job. So I'm not going to make any promises <laughs> um, just right at this stage. Uni should finish in... June I think it is and then at this stage I think that will be the end of my studies um, I'm not quite sure so it's either the end or there's two more years after that <laughs> we will find out <laughs> um, but I would like to come back in hopefully in May sometime to show you how I'm getting on with story time um, yeah so if you're not interested in Reggie's adventures, <laughs> I will sign off now and we'll catch up with you again soon, I hope. Um, but if you are interested to hear what Reggie got up to, um, hang around. I know I always get lots of comments about him. He's, he's a real character. He's just um, kept me entertained and on my toes since he came home last May. <laughs> And I'm already really, really careful with him. Like, as I mentioned with the zips, like oh, here's just a perfect example. I've got these nice little labels for my, all my projects and I zip them up. And as I said, like that needs to go in the bag so that I can't actually see the label because he'll try and eat it. That's him playing with something now. <laughs> Good timing, Reg. <laughs> so, absolutely paranoid about DMC um, and him eating it because I know that he has that drive to eat stuff um, and I'm a vet and I have removed um, you know sewing threads and needles from cats I just don't want to go there um, so I'm really careful with that like I, I used to be able to leave stuff out I can't do it anymore <laughs> everything goes away um, so last video when I filmed, I'd been to the farmer's markets. I think I showed a picture of him eating some endive. Why? <laughs> um, after, after I filmed and I did this, I did the bloopers reel. Um, he got to a bag of onions. So if you can picture that like red plastic mesh, um, it was the last thing out. Everything had gone away. That was just going to stay out on the bench in a, in a bowl, like a bag of onions what animal is going to be interested in that? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it racing around. It's like he knows we're talking about him. Anyway, so I found that the bag of onions was open and I was like, oh, okay, I think he's had a chew, um, but it didn't look like he'd ingested any because it was so neat. The opening was so neat. So I thought I felt maybe he'd nibbled off the seal. Well, not interested in the onions at all. So that was good because cats and onions don't, don't agree. Anyway, I put the bag away and he seemed okay. Um, the next, so that was Sunday and the next morning he vomited and I've never seen him sick before. So because I've been working at home, I know him pretty well. <laughs> I know his routines and he's, he's got a pretty tough, tough tummy, never been sick ever. So I thought that was a bit weird. Um, kept an eye on him. He seemed fine, you know, eating, speak of the devil, eating running around, crazy, um, just normal. And then Tuesday, he seemed good too. And I went, I went off to work and then came home and seemed fine. Wednesday morning, he wouldn't eat breakfast. And I knew, I knew something wasn't right. Um, 
And then, so I thought, okay, this is interesting. Um, I'll give him some of his favorite foods. So yogurt, milk, cheese, nah, not interested. Just wanted to find a sunny spot and sleep. He's right here, just <laughs> trying to, what are you trying to do? Um, and so I ummed and ahed. And then I was like, nah, this, this is silly. If I'm worried, I'll just take him, I'll take him, see if I can get an appointment. Um, and took him over to my local vet. They were able to, they were able to see him pretty much straight away, which was great. And I mean, it's pretty unusual probably for someone to come in and say, I think my cat has a linear foreign body. Um, please work it up. <laughs> um, but that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and they examined him. And he, um, he seemed fine. He was bright, you know, curious, cheeky, no pain in his tummy, no temperature, nothing, no, no masses in his tummy. And I knew that they didn't really believe me. Um, but I, you know, I used to work in practice. I probably wouldn't have necessarily believed, believed someone either because he'd seemed fine. Um, but I said, no, please, I, he's not, he's not himself, please, um, let's do some x-rays. So I left him there, um, which kind of was weird because it's the first time I've had a sick pet since I haven't worked in a vet practice. Normally I, I would have worked him up, um, myself. I would have done the surgery myself, um, but that was okay. They, they were great. And so... <laughs> He had a sedation and some x-rays and they rang me back and said, ah, oh, you are right. <laughs> so you can't see, um, you can't see the exact thing stuck in his tummy, um, but you can see, you know, patterns that suggest it. So there was like some loops of, um, you could see some gas and some sort of bunching. Um, and I was pretty sure that he probably had eaten some of that onion bag, um, that was the only thing I could put it down to. If it was going to be DMC, I would have absolutely been devastated because I'm so, so, so careful and I just never would have forgiven myself. Um, so I went to surgery and it was the onion bag. So naughty, naughty boy. He ate a large chunk of that onion bag, but he did it so neatly that you couldn't even tell. Um, he stayed over that night and then he just wasn't quite right the next day. So they ended up going in again um, just to make sure everything was okay. And um, he came through that really well. Um, I went and visited him that night and it was quite funny because <laughs> whenever I got updates, they would all say, he's so nice. Like he's not naughty. He said he's naughty. We just, we're just not seeing that. He's the perfect patient. He's, um, he just loves a, a cuddle and a pat and um we can do his temperature just one-handed he's just so good he's a dream like we'll keep him if you say he's that naughty we don't believe you um but when in, i went in to visit and he was um kind of high on pain relief um i'll pop a video in it was very sweet So he'd, um, I guess he was a few hours post-op there. So still a bit wobbly on his feet, but um, <laughs> enjoying his pain relief. Um, and at that stage, he was still the model patient. And then I got a call the next day saying, um, he's pulled his drip out. He won't let us put another one in. He's um, not letting us take his temperature anymore. We've offered him food now and he's like only little bits at a time and he's wolfing it down. Um, and he's just prowling around and yowling, like, can you please come and get him? He's kind of outstayed his welcome. <laughs> um, so I did, brought him home and had just had a really, just it wasn't a very fun weekend with him because once he got home, he was, he was really uncomfortable. So he had, um, you know, had incisions in his stomach and his intestines and then, you know, in his, in his um, abdomen as well. And he just felt rotten. Um, and yeah, so got him through the weekend and he started to improve. He was, he's a bit of a drama queen, of course. Um, didn't like having, or actually wouldn't tolerate an Elizabethan collar. Um, 
wouldn't tolerate. I tried a little baby onesie on him to see if I could just, you know, put something against the sutures because, you know, it's Reggie. He's going to eat his sutures out and he just couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Um, and he did. He ended up eating two of them, like half of them. There was four and all of a sudden there were two. So I just kept a close eye on him and thankfully um, he left the others in and, and he's made a full, full recovery. It's like <laughs> blissfully chilling right now. Um, so yeah, that was a really, really stressful. Um, so glad that, yeah, he had great care at the vets. Um, and I uh, has to go back for a vaccination, um, soon. So I'm sure they'll like to see him again. Maybe normal Reggie, naughty Reggie. Um, and actually it was funny. So I did take him back for a recheck and I was chatting to the, um, the girl at the counter. Hi Hayley, if you're watching. <laughs> Um, anyway, it turns out Hayley um, is a cross-stitcher, so I don't meet many random cross-stitchers out there, and loves floss tube, so I'm pretty sure she was the first person I'd met sort of um, in the wild who even knew what a floss tube was. So we talked stitching for a bit, and that, that was just really fun. So Hayley, he's doing fine. Um, hopefully we'll only be back for vaccination, nothing else, but it is Reggie, so who knows. Anyway, so that's everything from me. I um, hope you're all doing well. Uh, get vaccinated if you can. For me, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Uh, maybe towards the end of the year or I wouldn't be surprised if it's next year. Um, it's a little bit slower here in Australia, but we're just fortunate that um, we haven't had uh, such a serious impact. Um, but yep. Stay well. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them and I'll try and get back to you. That's actually something else I do need to do. Just social media in general has been <laughs> just a bit of a shocker the last, um, well, pretty much since, since the last video, since he got sick. Um, so I'll get there and we'll see you all again soon.